Hello and welcome to Nidhrania YouTube channel. My name is Branislav Beret and today this is going to be a very special video, video which is not very usual for my channel. I'm going to show you how to play Frostpunk the board game from Glass Cannon Games who were kind enough to send me the review copy of the game. And if you follow my channel you know that I primarily do purely instructional videos. However, this time I'm going to do something different for two reasons. First, the purely instructional video is already published by Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules channel. I would highly recommend to watch that video. It's a fantastic video. Paul did a great job. You can find the link to that video in the description of this video. Uh, so I didn't want to do the same thing as Paul did. So I wanted to create something different uh, and I wanted to complement Paul's video with some sort of the uh, gameplay combined with teaching the game. So I will uh, I will play first two or three rounds of the game and teach the game as it goes. So let's get started. Okay, so before we start, let me say that all the components in this video are upgraded components. I also have a special play mat specifically designed for this game. So when you get these components, uh, it, they make the already beautiful game even more beautiful. Good, so what the game is about. The, as I said, we are a, a group of survivors trying to uh, survive and complete the objectives of the scenario. This is the scenario card. It uh, gives you a little bit of introduction into the story and uh, it gives you some objectives. These are not the final objectives. And the only way how to win the game, how to win the scenario, is to complete the final objectives of that uh, of that particular scenario. You will get and you will see more and more scenario cards, uh, and those will navigate you through the scenario and also to the final objective. How to lose the game? Well, you can lose the game if you have too many people who die over the course of the game. Or if you have too many of these red tokens, those are discontent tokens. Or if you lose all these blue tokens, those are hope tokens. Or if you have too many hungry people. Or if this generator here uh, explodes, uh, that is also that is measured uh, by this uh, area here. I will explain these ways how to lose, lose the game in more detail over the course of the video. But to win the game, you simply have to complete the scenario objectives. Then, the game is played in rounds and each round players take turns, starting with the first player holding this first player token and then continuing in a clockwise direction and on your turn you have to perform an action. You can perform one of the six actions. I will explain all these actions in just a minute. However, before you take an action, you have to determine whether the action is heated or cold. This is a major concept of the game and it's determined by this generator board. And when you take an action, you have to take one of these citizens and, and take the action either in the building or somewhere on the map or one of these two actions. This is a construct action. This is a remove snow action. This one is, for example, always cold. This one is always heated. But when you take an action on the map or somewhere in the building, whether it's heated or cold is determined by this heat marker and the position of these tokens on this generator board. So, for example, when you take an... Uh, let's say I'm, I'm going to have this... Uh, this token here. When you determine whether the action is heated or cold, take this heat token and draw the imaginary line like this and all the actions taken in these buildings or in this area which is below this uh, imaginary line are heated actions. All other actions are cold actions. This is the red, orange and yellow building. Those buildings, uh, those colors represent the insulation level of buildings. The yellow insulation is the lowest, then orange and then red. Red uh, buildings have the highest level of insulation. That means it's easiest, it's always easier to, to take an action uh, or 
it's easier to heat actions in red buildings than in yellow buildings. Then this is the symbol for the generator tile, for this big central tile. This is the symbol for the generator, generator tile and all the near tiles. The near tiles are all the tiles which are adjacent to the generator. And this one is the, the symbol for generator, near tiles and also the far tiles. Uh, these are the, the, the outer, outer area. So when we have the heat marker in this position and let's say we would take an action in this cookhouse. The cookhouse is an orange building. So that indicates that the action would be cold. However, that building is located on the generator tile. And since it is on the generator tile, is it's currently heated. Similarly, if let's say we would have a workshop building here and a worker or uh, anyone would take an action in this workshop, it is on the far or you know on the tile on the far tile, which is this symbol, meaning the action would be called. However, the action is taken in the red building, so the action would be heated. If the action is heated, the 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 citizen taking the action is okay. If the action is called, that citizen becomes sick. When citizen becomes sick, they may get seriously ill. They may die. You may encounter many negative effects. So I will talk about sickness and death you know, later in the video. So just an example. This is how you determine whether the action is cold or heated. As I said, this is the most important concept in the game. And anytime on your turn, you can spend one call. Yeah, the, the heat marker starts on the zero space. Anytime on your turn during the action phase, you can take one call, well, spend the call, which means you take it from the personal supply and put it into general supply. And for each call you spend, you may increase the position of the heat marker by one. If you want to continue, you can continue spending call and moving the heat marker uh, up as many times as you want or uh, as you can uh, pay with the, with the call. However, you may never exceed the position of this cold marker. So you may not move any, any uh, further than that. So we are here. And now, in order to take an action, you have to take one of these citizens. These green ones are children, brown are workers, and blue are engineers. Children, under normal circumstances, are never allowed to take any actions unless specifically allowed by a law or some other game effect. But as I said, normally children may not perform actions. Then these are workers and these are engineers. The difference between work workers and engineers is that certain actions, for example, this workshop uh, or factory, they have this symbol which means those buildings require specifically engineers to take that action. So let me start with first action and that will be gathering resources. To take that action, simply take one of your citizens and place it on the space with resources. So let's say this one, place it on the space with resources and with no other meeples. And you can take up to two resources from that space and put them into your personal supply. Another thing which I uh, haven't mentioned yet is that this area is normally reserved for this generator. But I don't want to block uh, the space here and I don't want to uh, block the visibility. Uh, and even in your games, you can simply put the generator aside. And as you can see, this area then is uh, specifically reserved for or designed to be your supply area. So here I have uh, you can have you can have your uh, meeples here. I decided to have resources. So this is my personal supply. And after gathering resources, uh, I, I took two resources from the space to my personal supply. You may not get the resources from the space, from the same space, two or more times in the same turn. So, uh, you know, there is a worker here. I may not take another worker and gather additional resources from the same space. That is not allowed. 
I am talking about spaces. What is a space? Space is this one area. Uh, each hex, oh, sorry. Each one hex contains two spaces, uh, two spaces separated by this line. So this is one space, this is another space. And the generator tile has five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. This is not a space because thematically this, uh, this drawer from the generator should be here. So that's why this is not a space. One, two, three, four, five spaces on the generator only. And I will explain adjacency uh, in, in just a minute. So that was gather resources action. Another action, uh, and again, the, ac the action is heated or cold based on whether, where, where you take the action. I took the action on the generator tile. The generator tile is heated from the generator in the middle. So this action was uh, a heated action. The next action I'm going to explain is remove snow. It's this small area on, on this board. So you may take a worker or an engineer and now you will take two additional, two new near tiles or one far tile. This action is always cold. Removing snow thematically, you are removing the snow from the map and you will add new tiles to the map. So either two near tiles or one far tile. This is also indicated here on the action. So let me, uh, when you do that, simply take the stack of these tiles, take the two top tiles and before you flip them face up, first decide where you're going to place them. These near tiles have to be adjacent to the generator. Uh, sorry. And you can place them anywhere. <laughs> you can place them anywhere. So uh, I can place one of them here, the other one here. If I would decide to do so. Uh, but let's say I want to... I want to place them, for example, like this. I want to see what is available. Uh, here with the with the other resources. So then you can flip them over and add the resources as depicted on those tiles. Uh, when you flip the tile with this symbol, that, that gives you food immediately. So one, two, three. This yellow token is your actual food. This one shows the number of hungry people. So three food. Now here we have two trees. So let me place two trees here. Here we have two wood and one coal. So that's it. And that's the entire remove snow action. One more note, if you add a far tile, it has to be connected to the generator, generator tile. So you can place it here, you can place it here, or even here because it is connected to the generator but you may not place it here or right here, for example. That's, that's not allowed. Since remove snow is always a cold action, the worker taking the action gets sick. So increase the number, increase the corresponding or move the corresponding sickness token one space forward. This is the sickness token for workers, this one for engineer, this one for children. Good then, next action is the construct action. That's this area on, on this board. And this action is always heated. And you can do three sub actions. The hammer is the build action. This uh, arrow with the cross is the dismantle action. With, building, with, with build action, you build buildings. With dismantle, you dismantle them and return them back to the, to the building board. Why would you dismantle? Well, you can, you can make space for new buildings. I will show you later. So in order to take, uh, again, take one of the citizens and you can take up to three buildings, up to three uh, sub actions. And in order to build a building, you have to pay the cost, which is this white symbol under that column. So these buildings cost one wood, these cost two wood, this one costs four wood and one steam core. That's this, uh, this component here. This is, uh, this is one steam core. 
This is a very valuable resource and very rare. It's very difficult to get one. So in order to build a building, uh, let's say I would like to build, uh, since we have some trees here, mm, let me show you how, uh, uh, how the sawmill works. So I can take the sawmill that costs two wood. So I need to uh, pay two wood to the general supply. Let me place a sawmill in the area here. Uh, and with the sawmill, give me a second, I can place this, this, this sawmill, yes, uh, this beautiful miniature. Then that was the first build. With the second build, I want to build this gathering post, definitely. So that is, that is another wood, one wood. And uh, let me, I would like to do something. Okay, let me place the, uh, let me place it here. When you place a building, you place the building in any empty space uh, without another building or without meeple. And when you do, if there are any resources or even trees on that space, you simply remove those uh, resources or trees and return them back to the general supply. So I want to do... No, let me place it here. Let me place the gener uh, gathering uh, post here with, uh, with the building. And for example, for two wood, again, uh, <clears throat> this is maybe not the best strategy. Uh, it's almost definitely not the best strategy, but these tents, bunk houses and uh, houses, they provide shelter to your citizens. They are very important. You will need it. So let me show you. Let's say I want to build these tents. Uh, they cost two wood. Let me place them near the generator. So two wood. And uh, so now we have tents. And those were three sub actions and that's the construct action. Uh, it's, uh, the construct action is now over. Now, before I go to another action, let me show you another component of the game. And those are these citizen cards. Each player has certain number of these cards. Uh, and in a solo game, uh, you have six cards. You can use these cards to take actions there are three types of them. Oh, let me uh, let me show them on this camera here. So let me show all three types. The type of the citizen card is shown uh, with this icon. So this is an engineer. This is a worker. This is a this is a children, uh, a child. Now these cards, uh, if if you want, if you use the citizen card. You may use this specific building and then perform that action. Uh, you must use the building here and this action completely replaces, replaces the standard action. For example, if I take this particular one, let me, all right. This one allows me to take the remove snow action, but instead of the standard action, I can perform this action it's normal except that I can place two far tiles. And then if the action is called, I would get two sick engineers instead of one. Since these two spaces are empty and it would be perfect to place two far tiles in these two spaces, I can use this citizen. You may only use one, uh, each player may only use one citizen card per round. When you do, Place it somewhere in front of you to indicate that you have taken, you have used a citizen card this round and you would then discard the card at the end of the round. So to take the action, I have to take an engineer because it's an engineer card and perform the remove snow action. So let me take an engineer, take the remove snow action and it's, it's a cold action. So as a consequence, I have to get or gain two sick engineers instead of one. 
But the action allows me to take two far tiles instead of one, so I'm taking two of them. And again, decide which one goes where, and then I can flip them face, uh, face up. And here we have, uh, we have four trees and one steam core and three foot. One, two, three foot, four trees. We are having a beautiful woods here, a forest building. And here, this is the icon for the steam core, a valuable resource. So that was it. As I said, let me leave the card here just to indicate that I have taken the action uh, this round and uh, that was how you use the citizen card. Now the fourth type of action that I'm going to show you is how to use the building. We have <coughs> we already have a few buildings on the map so in, in order to use the building you have to take one of the citizens and uh, use the building. Th these two pre-printed buildings they are always available and they have this small icon. It's the same as this icon on the factory or on the workshop. Those icons indicate, or also on the medical medical post, this icon indicates that you can only take the action in that building with an engine <coughs> with an engineer. You may not use workers there. So when you take an action, let me show you this this sawmill here right now. Take the available citizen, I will take the worker here, place it in the building or, or next to the building, place it in the same space, and again, determine whether the action is cold or heated. At the moment, the heat marker is here, and this is an orange building and the near tile. An orange building and the near tile, both of them are currently cold because they are above this line of the heat marker. So let me spend a coal and increase the position of the heat marker by one. And now actions in the orange buildings or on the near tiles are heated. And uh, the, the worker is not getting sick. When you use the sawmill, you can only use, uh, you chop down the trees from the same hex. So I'll chop down the tree and gain three wood. One, two, three three wood in my personal supply. So that's how you spend the building. Again, you can only spend, uh, you can only use the building with one worker per round uh, when the building is small. Later in the game, you will have these, uh, these larger buildings. The larger buildings have to be, for example, placed uh, on one hex only. So let me show you an example here. It could be placed like this. You may not place it over two different hexes. It, may, it must be on one hex. But large buildings can be, or the actions on the large buildings can be taken uh, two by, by two um, meeples, so you can take it twice per round. But not the beacon one, this one is not a specific refraction. So that's how we use the building. Now, let me show you a few of the buildings here. We already talked about sawmill. Now, this gathering post is a very important building and I would highly recommend to use it and use it wisely because it allows you to gather one resource from each adjacent space. Now we talked about what is a space. Uh, what is the adjacent space? It is always a space uh, on the same hex. So the gathering post is on this space this one on the same hex is adjacent. I can take one wood from here. And now uh, take all hexes which are adjacent to this hex. So this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And all spaces on all these adjacent hexes are adjacent to that space. So uh, when I uh, take in the action here, the adjacent spaces are this one, and this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, both these spaces and both these spaces. Additional, also this space on the generator is adjacent to the style, to this, to this space. So gathering resource, uh, gathering post allows you to take one resource from each adjacent space. So I took the uh, resource from this space. 
I can take the resource from this space. Now, tree is not a resource, so you may not chop down a tree. You, you need sawmill for that. I can take one resource from here, there's nothing. One resource from this space, so I gain a valuable steam core. And one resource from here, oh, sorry. And, and also one resource from this space. So when you use the gathering post, you may actually gather five, six, uh, or even eight resources with the same, well, with one action only. That's highly, highly efficient. And I would really recommend to uh, place the tiles first before you decide where you place the uh, gathering post. Then the next action, actually this cookhouse action, it's the building which is, uh, it's usually always in the game but the position may be different. And this cookhouse allows you to spend three food and either lose discontent or gain hope. Those are these red and blue circles there. Uh, I need to use a worker here. So let me take this worker and I can place it in the building. And now we need to spend three food, one, two, three. And now I will explain discontent and hope. Because with this action I can either lose one discontent or gain one hope. Uh, let's start with gaining hope. When you gain, you, um, you can either uh, flip these tokens from the inactive side. Inactive side is the black side or side with the black, uh, black icon. Active side is the, icon with the, is the side with the white icon. So when you gain plus hope, plus one hope, if you have a token on the inactive side, you can flip it to the active side, or instead of that, you can take uh, the back, randomly draw a token and place it with the inactive side up. So plus one hope is some sort of a half step. Uh, you either add the inactive, new inactive token, or if you have an inactive, you can flip it to the active side. Now, minus or, or losing discontent works in the same way. So if you have an active token, you can flip it to the inactive side. That's one option. Or the other option, if you have any inactive token, you can completely discard it and uh, put it back in the corresponding, uh, corresponding bag. You may have a specific actions which says, for example, plus, let me say, uh, plus motivation, plus one motivation. This is motivation, this is care, this is anger, apathy. You can find this in, in the rulebook or on your help sheets. So for example, if you gain plus one motivation specifically, so it's not hope general, but uh, hope in general, but plus one motivation. You can do two things, like two half steps. First thing, you always take a new token from the bag and place it with the inactive side up. And then if you have the motivation with the inactive side up, you can flip, up, you can flip it to the active side. If you wouldn't have, let's say this is the situation and I have plus one motivation, I can draw a new token and it's, let's say it's going to be this one. The second half step, flipping the inactive motivation to an active motivation is forfeited because I don't have any inactive motivation here right now. And the same applies if you have minus something uh, like minus anger, minus one anger uh, or anything, any other effect like that. So. Hopefully that's clear how hopefully that's clear how this discontent and hope tokens work. Then the next important building I want to explain is this workshop. When you first built that workshop, uh, it's 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 a red building. Since it's red, you can place it even on the far tile because it will be very easy to uh, if you want to use it to use it as the as the heat action heated action, but. When you first build that workshop, you don't need any actions, you don't need any citizens, you automatically start researching your first technology. And 
you have four technologies in the game. Each technology has this development token. This is inactive side. This is an active side. So when starting the research, choose one of those technologies. For example, this one says that the, that the remove snow action is always heated. I really like that one. This number indicates how many rounds it's, it's, uh, it takes to research that technology. So I add the, take the development token and um, add this number, so four, to the current round number. One, two, three, four, and that's where I place the development token. As soon as the development token meets the round token, the technology will be researched. So again, you can do it immediately when you build the workshop without spending a citizen, without spending an action, but only when you build the first workshop. When you build the second one, you don't uh, start any, any new research. When talking about this workshop already, um, when you take an action here later, so uh, let me, uh, it has to be an engineer because of this icon, it must be an engineer. And it allows you to take two sub actions, either advance the technology or upgrade. Uh, you can do two advanced technologies or two upgrades or one and the other. So one uh, upgrade and one technology. When you uh, perform the technology action, you simply advance the technology mark development marker one step backwards. So closer, uh, you speed up that research, so to say. When you perform the upgrade, you may upgrade one of the buildings on the map, uh, which has not been upgraded and which has not, which doesn't have a worker. Uh, the buildings with these two dots, uh, hopefully it's going to be seen uh, here. You can see it better. Some buildings has the, have these two diamonds around the name. Those buildings cannot be upgraded. For example, factory cannot be upgraded. A workshop cannot be upgraded, uh, but not always the red buildings, but also some, some yellow and orange buildings. For example, the cookhouse cannot be upgraded, but you can upgrade a building which has, uh, which doesn't have a worker uh, and uh, can be upgraded. So for example, this gathering post, the upgrade cost is this symbol in the, in the corresponding column. So the gathering post re post requires one, one wood to be upgraded. So spend the wood from the personal supply and then flip the tile to the other side. Usually upgrade uh, makes the building more efficient uh, in this case and with higher insulation level. So later when you take this action, you can take it as a heated action uh, if, if you heat the red buildings. So that's how the upgrade works. Now, let me explain this space here. This is very important space. Uh, this very, very small symbol here uh, is the scales. So with this one, you, up, you introduce new law to the game. You need an engineer here. So uh, if you have any available engineers, you can place the engineer there and then introduce a new law to the game. Take the law cards. Uh, you can always look through these cards and choose which one you want to, uh, which one you want to introduce. And uh, when, when you do, let's say, uh, what is it? What can we do? Let me choose. Uh, let me choose this one so that I can show you all the effects in the game. Uh, you can either choose. Uh, okay, let me let me choose the child shelter. We are going to introduce this law to the game. Take all other cards and uh, keep them nearby for the moment. First thing you resolve is the instant effect. Here we have plus a blue token. So that is basically plus one hope. Again, we can either add additional token or flip the inactive token to the active side. Let me for example, draw another token and place it with the inactive side up. This is justice token. So that's the first thing you resolve, uh, adding, um, adding hope. 
some other effects uh, you can or you, sometimes you can lose the hope if you introduce the child labor you lose the hope increase discontent uh, some cars don't have any effect sometimes this is this is specifically plus one anger so here that that's this icon which we already explained and, and so on so first you resolve this effect then the card has permanent effects this one says that you unlock the child shelter building I have it already prepared here uh, this is the, next to the building board and the child shelter costs two wood to build so these buildings which are not placed on the building board they are special buildings and the cost of those buildings is always uh, shown or, or always mentioned on the card and then when this law is introduced you may immediately build that child shelter so since we have two wood why why not to do it uh, I so you take the building again place it in any available space let's place it next to the generator child shelter cannot be upgraded and as you see this building has this scale symbol so that indicates that this building comes into play as the effect of the law and now you also you have to resolve few few additional things first if the law has this symbol in the top right hand corner uh, this is L this is the law number L02 and this symbol means that the law number L01 is permanently removed from the game uh, those four first four first eight laws L1 L2 L3 L4 L5 L6 are pairs so when you introduce child shelter you have to remove child labor L01 L01 this is removed from the game vice versa when you introduce child labor child labor you have to remove l02 from the game so that's the first thing we are removing child labor from the game and second the l20 card take the card take the consequences card so that those are the cards with this purple background locate the cards with l02 l02a l02b take them then randomly shuffle them so that you don't know which one you, you, you take and then place it and add it to this dusk deck we will talk about the dusk deck in the in the dusk phase and the the other one is returned to the deck you don't look at the card you, sh you should not know which one you you uh, you have selected whether the a or b because when you play more scenarios uh, or the senior when you play these scenarios more often you would know what the a and b card would do so you should not know which one was added whether a or or a b and that's the last effect from the law from introducing the laws uh, one last note you have you can have maximum four laws in the game although you have more of them available you can only introduce four for the entire game okay now we don't have any more workers available which means the action phase is over and now we will proceed to the dusk phase what you do during the dusk phase uh, first if there are any any cards in this event display with the dusk phase uh, keyword then you would resolve them for example let me uh, let me see if I can find uh, yes here uh, here we have a, a morning card I'll talk about those later but this card has a dusk phase effect so if this particular card would be in the event display you would resolve this effect right now then after resolving any cards in the event display take this dusk deck shuffle the card shuffle shuffle all the cards in that deck uh, at the start of the game you may only have two or, or three later there may be more cards and reveal the top card from that deck and resolve the effect on the on the on the card um, here you flip of I'm, I'm not going to read this one you simply resolve what is there and then you either place it in the discard pile if there are no icons uh, here or if you uh, 
Uh, if you reveal, let me uh, let me talk about it now. If you have, let's say this one. If you reveal this type of card, you there are two options here. You may have more than that. Uh, you have to choose one of those options, and if you choose an option which has this uh, red cross, you remove the card from the game. If you choose an option with this exclamation mark, you take the card and place it in the events display. And again, these are here you have a permanent effect for the action phase, dusk phase, dusk phase uh, effect, and so on. So. If there is a cross, red cross, remove from the game with the exclamation mark in the event display. Otherwise, if there is no icon, you place it in the discard pile. Uh, if you resolve the social dispute card, this one, uh, this kind of card, once you resolve the effect of the card, the social dispute is always, always removed from the game and then you take the next card from this face-up deck, read it carefully so that you know what, uh, what, is, what is there and what you can expect from that card and add it to the dusk deck face down. Then the next phase is the hunger phase, which uh, happens on this uh, hunger, hunger track. First, you decrease the hunger at the start of this scenario, there's no hunger, so there's no effect. Uh, it, I will show more in, in later rounds. Then you have to feed the citizens. Look at the current round. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, the first round. And here we have the children symbol. This is the symbol for engineers and this one for uh, workers. So in the first round and then in fourth, seven and so on, you will have to feed children. Currently, we have eight children in our population, so we need to spend uh, eight food to feed all the children. We have 13, spending eight, there's five, so we still have five food remaining. I will show you more from this uh, hunger phase later, uh, in some later rounds, when, uh, when there will be some hunger remaining here as well. So, that's the hunger phase. Then, number, uh, phase number nine is the ninth phase, na night phase. Take all the meeples from, uh, from the map and return them back to the, to the board here, uh, so like this. Now, count the number or, or count the heated shelters. We have a child shelter and child shelter allows you to uh, to provide shelter for four children. So we have two children. If you want, you can somehow lay them down to indicate that these children have a warm place to sleep. Then we have tent, which shows two small icons. Uh, let me show it here. Both, all the tents, bunk houses and houses provide space. Uh, or a shelter for two citizens. Those could be children, those could be workers, engineers, it doesn't matter. So let's say, let me, uh, we, we have two, two spaces. Let me place uh, a, an engineer and one, uh, one worker. So let's say these two people sleep in that shelter. And that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six people who don't have a warm place to sleep, which means these particular, uh, these citizens will get sick. Four, uh, four workers and two engineers will get sick. So four workers, one, two, three, four, two engineers will get sick. For each engineer or for, for each citizen which, who doesn't have a warm place to sleep, that citizen gets sick. Uh, then I can prepare them for the next day. Again, I will show you more from this night phase in, in subsequent rounds. And then that's the end of round one with the, with the night phase. And we proceed to the new day. 
New day starts with the dawn phase. Uh, in this phase you simply move the round marker to the next round. You also move the first player marker to the next player clockwise. In a solo game this doesn't apply obviously. And if the development marker meets the round marker the technology would be researched. If the round marker reaches the space with this uh, event token you resolve the event. If the storm marker meets the round marker you will resolve the storm in the weather phase. So there could be some events happening. I will show you these events in later rounds. The, the next phase is the morning phase in which you simply take the top card from the morning deck and resolve the effect on the card. It follows the same rules as the dusk cards here or social dispute cards. So if there is any immediate effect you apply that effect then if you have options you have to choose one of them and uh, let's say let me choose this one the first option again allow me the, to skip reading the card but now option number one has this exclamation mark symbol and I want to use this card because it has it has this area here which is a special action it's a place for a special action which I'm going to explain this round so that's why I want to keep the card by the way at the end of the round you you discard uh, the citizen card you played in the previous round uh, and that's the end of the that's the end of the morning phase so the card is now in the event display then the next phase is the generator phase phase number three first in this phase if there are any citizen uh, citizen icons between the heat marker and this cold marker that citizen or those citizen would get sick so if let's say if this was here one worker one engineer and one uh, child would get sick at the moment only one were one worker would get sick if you want in this phase you can still spend a coal and for each coal you spend you uh, uh, increase the heat marker so we can still fuel the generator now but let's say I don't want to do it so one worker gets sick and now take as many coal tokens as indicated next to the heat marker so here it's two if the heat marker was here it would be three so let me take two coal uh, two coal and here I'm going to use uh, I'm not going to use the upgraded resources uh, I'm, I'm going to use these uh, the, these cubes uh, throw it into the uh, into the generator and then very carefully pull up the drawer and see how many cubes fall out um, it is likely that in the first rounds uh, all of them will fall out later some of them will get stuck in the generator and all the uh, all the coal cubes that fall out are placed in this stress track this stress track is very important because as soon as you place uh, it has uh, spaces for 10 cubes as soon as you place 11th one bad things happen first the uh, the generator is overheated if it happens second time it explodes and you immediately lose the game I'll talk about this stress later uh, next round I, I'll show you how it breaks down so with that uh, you place the heat marker down to zero so it's the morning uh, it's it's the morning um, generator is cold and you now have to heat it again that's the end of the generator phase. Now we move on to the fourth phase, phase number four, which is weather phase. First reveal the new weather card. Then move the indicators shown on the card. Uh, these ones, so first heat mar uh, cold marker goes up one space. Uh, yellow marker, yellow token and also the orange and the red, which means it's now going to be more difficult uh, thematically it's getting colder and colder and it's going to be more difficult to uh, uh, heat your actions then this number indicates how much food you get for each uh, for each hunter's hut hunter's hut it's this small icon 
we don't have don't have that building on the map yet if we had the building on the map anywhere then for each symbol you would gain one foot if it's upgraded it has two symbols from some I would, I would get two foot and so on so that's how this symbol works now this symbol number four is related to these expeditions we don't have anyone on the expeditions yet but i'll show you that next round and then this number indicates how many spaces this storm marker moves backwards toward uh, towards the round marker at the moment it's zero so the marker stays where it is so that's the end of the weather phase and then phase number five is the preparation phase and this phase uh, players can choose to use <laughs> they, they may decide to use their advisor each player has one card even in a solo game you have one uh, and if you want you can use the effect on the card uh, usually you have to use uh, some of these some of these hope tokens and this general advisor you can use it only if you exhaust one hope exhausting meaning flipping it from the active side to the inactive side uh, and then you can remove up to three stress cubes from the stress track so these these ones up to three cubes from the stress track i don't want to use it now so i keep it but if you uh, if you have uh, if you play with more than one player so if you have a two player game three player game uh, during this preparation phase you can only use as a group you can only use one card so only one player can play one card um, their, their advisor and that's it you may not have more players playing the cards uh, this happens uh, repeatedly every single preparation phase so if you want you can every round you can use the same advisor or you can choose a different advisor next round in a solo game you can only use your own one your one card and if in a solo game you also have this call to rise card you can use it only once per game as indicated by this icon once you use the effect you remove this card from the game this one gives you more citizen cards which can be very valuable uh, and it can be a game breaker later in the game so that's the uh, that's the preparation phase there's one more thing that's, uh, that's happening in the preparation phase and that is you have to resolve the sickness basically it's the start of the day and sick people will get more sick or more seriously sick and if you have people who are really sick they simply won't work so the tokens which are in this first segment uh, separated by these lines uh, the tokens in this area there's no effect yet here we have a sickness token in this area and here we have a one and this uh, circled arrow symbol that means we have to flip the sickness marker to the skull side if you flip it from the syringe side to the skull side nothing happens yet the worker simply gets uh, seriously ill if you flip it from the uh, skull side back to the syringe side or meaning from the skull side to the next level uh, that means that that worker dies uh, i will show you that next round now we have the marker on the skull side so i will show you the death effects at the start of the next round so that's it that's what that was preparation phase phase number five and we are back to phase number six which is the action phase there are a few more actions that i want to show you here but first let me take a worker place it in this gathering post and uh, I have the building upgraded although I didn't really perform those actions in a previous round but let's say this is the current state of the map so I have the worker performing performing the action in the gathering post um, the gathering post is now uh, a red building but I need to uh, in order to make it a heated action I need to uh, move the heat marker two spaces up which means I need to spend two coal and I definitely want to have it as a heated action uh, so 
Again, I can gather one resource from all adjacent spaces. So this one, this one, and this one. That's it. Uh, that was the first action. Now with the second action, I want to do build. Build is always heated. And I want to show you this, uh, uh, as we need to build the beacon. So I'm going to build it. The cost is three wood. So three wood are now gone. One, two, three. And the beacon must be placed in, uh, in, in one hex because it's a, big, it's a large building. And when you take uh, an action here, deploy scout, it's always a heated action. So let me place it here. Uh, and I leave this near tile for other buildings which require uh, heating. Beacon action uh, doesn't re or uh, yeah, beacon action doesn't require any any call because this this is always going to be a heated action. Again, let me place a building here to make it a little more beautiful. So we have the beacon, and now. Well, Let's say I don't want to do any more, um, any more build actions. Uh, yeah, let's say let me let me or let me build this hunter's hut. Let me build it, uh, for example, here. So that costs uh, one wood. Removing the wood here. And here we have the beautiful, uh, beautiful miniature. So that was the build uh, construct action with two builds. And now I can show you the uh, action associated with the beacon. And the action is deploy scout. To deploy a scout, uh, here's one symbol with a double ha hammer, which means you can have only one expedition active. You can find those symbols here as well. You can take uh, any citizen, so worker or, uh, or an engineer, and place it on any starting space on the starting space of any of these expeditions. These expedition, this one gives you some resources. This uh, there are expedition with. Uh, let me show you. Uh, for example, this one. Uh, the expeditions with this symbol will give you some more people, some of them may get sick, some of them may be hungry. So that's that's another option and the expedition with these question marks can give you either uh, resources or people. So um, let's say I will... Uh, let me go here. So that's the deploy scout action. This is always a heated action and if the beacon up building is not upgraded, you can have maximum one active expedition. Once you upgrade that building, which by the way costs one steam core, you can have two active expeditions. And I would highly recommend to get two, um, two active expeditions because people on the expedition don't require shelter and they may bring back uh, valuable resources or more people from these expeditions. So, that's deploy scout action. Now, let me show you another one. As I said uh, here, uh, on some of the cards in this event display, if you have any, any action space here, you can also take this special action. This one shows a worker or an engineer symbol. So let me take an engineer, for example. And you can take an action which is described on the card. These actions can only be taken once per round or in this case, only once per game. And for example, this one, you can only, you can only take this particular action if you have the beacon built. Then you can take three resources and place them on the card here. So let me say... Uh, Whatever, this is basically, it doesn't matter. For the demonstration purposes, uh, I took the special action. It will be once per round and uh, once per game only and, uh, and that's it. This is the last type of action you can take in the game, special action uh, in the event display. 
This action, these, these special actions are always heated. Then later in the game you will see that these resources are running out very, very quickly. Now, there are some, uh, these small tokens, you place these small tokens on this outer rim now, during the setup. And for example, here we have wood, here we have the coal token, and you can gather these resources only when you when, when you access these areas here. So you have to have a, a near tile here, here, for example, let's say this one. I'm not going to place any resources there. And you have to have uh, this, re uh, this hex, uh, okay. And when you do, you, uh, in order to, uh, to, to gather this, this wood, you have to place, you, you have to have this wall drill built. It costs five wood and a steam core. If you manage to build it, you have to build it here. And only then you can, uh, you can gather the resources from this area. But then you can, you can do it uh, unli for unlimited time. Since this is a large building, you can use it twice per, twice per round. So for example, one and two, you get three wood each time. And this is like unlimited supply of wood. Similarly, in order to, to uh, mine the coal here, you would have to have the tiles uh, in these spaces, uh, or at least this one, you have to have this one connected to the generator, and then you have to build this, uh, this coal mine. Next, uh, when you manage to build this factory, uh, let me build it here, for example. Uh, in order to let me return this home, uh, in order to use this factory building, you have to use the engineer and when you take the action here, you spend one steam core, so you have to return it to, to the general supply and you gain one automaton. Automaton is a machine, it doesn't require any food, it doesn't, you know, all the actions um, whether it's heated or cold action, it doesn't have any effect on, on that automaton and uh, it doesn't require any shelter. So it's like as a, a, a one action, extra action every round for the cost of one coal. Automatons perform actions as workers. So if you need an action which requires engineers, you may not use automaton for such action. And automatons may, may not go to expeditions and also you may not use them to perform special actions. Other than that, you simply take an automaton, place it on the action space or, or, or on a building here, uh, spend one call. And in this example, I could uh, simply gather three wood uh, and that's it. So that's it, that's all I wanted to show you in this action phase. Uh, let me quickly continue. Here I have an engineer, I want to take the workshop action and I can I can do uh, go one, two uh, and with this one I immediately completed uh, the uh, development of the technology. So as of now, all the remove snow actions are always heated actions. And as soon as you finish researching one technology, choose any other, let's say uh, cook houses can be used by all child people, a good one, and uh, start researching that one. So again, number four, so one, two, three, four, and I'm just uh, started researching uh, the nutrition education technology. So that was the workshop. Uh, now let's say, uh, I would like to, uh, mm, I, I need some coal so I can simply uh, use these, do the gathering, get the resources action here. And uh, I can still go here. And well, this action is on the uh, generator tile, so it's heated, but in order to take, in order to take this action, I need to spend another coal because it's the near tile and the orange building and these actions are still cold. So I need to use the coal. These actions are cold. I need to use the coal to make those actions heated. 
and I can chop down the tree and gain three more wood. Uh, with that, uh, I, I think my, my actions uh, are over. That's the end of the action phase. Now moving on to the dusk phase. Again, let's say uh, we would have to resolve the event here. I'm not going to, uh, to lose time, but it's a dispute card. So this one would be, after resolving, it would be removed from the game. New one will be added. Uh, so that was the dusk phase. Uh, and uh, we don't have any dusk effects here. <coughs> here. Then we go to the hunger phase first. We need to reduce hunger, but there is no hunger. However, we need to feed the citizens at the moment. And currently we are in the second round, so we need to feed engineers. And since we have 12 engineers and we only have five food, five engineers are fed and seven are now hungry. Uh, they are hungry now. We will have a chance to uh, feed them next day. So this effect is not being applied right now. It, it will only be uh, effective next round. So when you have hungry people, don't panic yet. You can still feed them next day. You will probably have other type of other group of people hungry, but uh, having people hungry, it, it's not an immediate problem. It is a problem, but you don't resolve the effects immediately. After the hunger phase, there is a night phase, so uh, let me show you what happens here. Let's get all the people back home. Uh, you don't take the, the citizens from expeditions, they are on the expedition. And they don't require, obviously, oh, sorry, they don't require any shelter. So currently, we have this child shelter, so two children have a place to sleep, uh, two tents, and let me say I will, uh, I will have two workers sli sleeping in those tents. So two workers will get sick, one, two, and now one, two, three engineers, one, two, three engineers will get sick as well. That's the end of the night phase and we can move on to another day. Another day starts with, uh, uh, with the dawn phase, moving the round marker, then the morning phase. Again, I'm going to speed it up. The, there would be some event, I would have to resolve the event. I'm, uh, as I said, I'm just uh, speeding it up. I'm not going to resolve it, resolve it now. Uh, then the third phase is the generator phase. Again, let's say it stays as it is, one engineer would get sick because there is one empty space. And then I need to take three cubes and throw it into the generator and hope that only uh, not all of them will drop out. They do. So there are five cubes now and that's still okay. Uh, however, let me show you what happens now? Let's say, let's simply say that we have now all these spaces filled with the, with the coal cube. Uh, if it's like this, if these 10 spaces are filled and this one not yet, then, then it's okay. However, as soon as you place any cube in this area, so the, the cube number 11 drops out, even even if uh, more cubes drop out, it doesn't matter. The generator performs or the generator breaks down. When it happens, simply follow uh, the icons here. All these indicators go up by one. That's, that's shown here. So called up by one. This one goes up. This one goes up. This one goes up. Uh, and you flip the heat marker to the other side, indicated that the next time the generator breaks, you lose the game. This goes down to zero. So that's what happens during, and of course, you take all the cubes from, uh, from this stress track and uh, return it back to the general supply. In order to prevent that, for example, if there are any, any cubes here, 
mm, you can take this action it's called um, it's called generator action you can only use that action with an engineer and if you do you can remove up to five cubes from the stress track uh, so you remove them and return them back to the general supply however if you take that action and you also if you take that action and you also spend a steam core you do two things first you may remove all the stress cubes from here and second you may take uh, you may take this special upgrade tile and add it to the generator like this and again I would highly highly recommend to do it because it may not seem um, like a big upgrade but this little piece this little component usually holds a lot of cubes here so it will make your life uh, much much easier so once you resolve the generator we move on to the uh, to the weather phase so again flip the weather card move the indicators in the the number of spaces shown on the card in this case the red building is not moving then gain one foot for each hunter symbol here we have one symbol so that would be one foot and now advance the expedition by three spaces and now let me explain those expeditions when you have a worker on the expedition uh, you go you, you move you advance number of spaces shown on the weather card so in this case it's three so one two and now as soon as you reach the last space on the expedition you have two options you can either skip that expedition and continue your movement so one two and there's one woman left which means this is the card a take the top card yeah the, take the deck of expedition cards take the top card from the following deck in this case it would be b place it like this so leave the bottom space uh, visible so we had one two steps on the card a and now the third step would be would be here and that's uh, that's the end of the current movement in the current round that's the first option skipping the previous location the other option is to explore the location so we have three steps one two now let's say we decide we we uh, explore the location flip the card to the other side and now if the card has this uh, blue arrow hopefully it is seen uh, on the camera if it has this blue arrow that's the air that's the symbol to continue so you simply find something here you gain two wood and two foot you find that and you may continue on the expedition meaning you can place a new card place the card uh, so that you leave that um, uh, leave that loot visible and place your worker on the next space but all the uh, remaining movement points are lost uh, the other option if you don't want to continue is this uh, yellow arrow and that means you return back home so you find two wood and two food you gain these resources and you return back home so the worker goes back to your supply and now the cart is removed uh, from from the expedition display and replaced by the cart shown uh, or indicated by the symbol here is the symbol b which means you would replace this cart with the cart uh, letter b uh, with the letter b if you decide to continue uh, you remain on the first space on the next cart and that's it for the for this round next round during the next weather phase when you flip the next weather card again you advance this number of spaces this is three so let's say i go one two and again i can either skip this location or explore uh, and once i flip the card over again here we have both the blue and yellow arrow which means I can gain additional two wood and six foot 
and I can still continue if I decide to continue uh, since this was the B card I can take the C card uh, place the meeple on the first space and the excess movement is lost next round if I reach the end of the expedition I simply go home uh, and take when so let's say next round I reach the final space I flip the card over and since this is the C card uh, card number uh, card with letter C is the last one I get one steam core four wood and I have to return home and when I go home I take the steam wood and the steam core and four wood sorry I also gain two wood and six foot and also two wood and two foot so I get everything from here and bring it home you may ask why would you uh, not explore every single location because not all the locations for example here not all those locations have these blue arrows which would allow you to continue so if you decide to explore this location you find something and you have to go home uh, as you can see these A locations give you some benefits but locations B give you better benefits and location C give you the best benefits so these are always the uh, dilemmas and and uh, difficult decisions when you are on the expedition once you finish the finish the expedition here says new a so you remove these cards yeah you, you put them away and uh, place a new new a card to the display when you upgrade the beacon you can have two ex active expeditions at the same time so those were expeditions in the weather phase. Again, the next phase is the preparation phase. If you want, you can use the, uh, the advisor. But now we have to resolve the sickness effects. Here we have one, uh, we, we have the sickness, one, well, the sickness tokens of workers and engineers in this segment with this one uh, rotating arrow symbol which means the syringe, uh, the, the engineer sickness token flips from the syringe side to the skull side. So one engineer gets very, very sick. However, one worker, uh, this token flips from the skull side and it actually worsens even more. And that means uh, one worker dies. So this token is flipped back to the sickness side, to the syringe side, but that worker died reduce the number of workers by one and because it was a sick person sick worker also reduce the number of sick people by one and you have to resolve the death effect you have two options here you either take the deck of citizen cards and flip the top card face up and resolve the effect which corresponds to the person who just died since it was a, uh, a worker you completely ignore the rest of the card you only look at the symbols at the bottom of the card so here if the worker dies you have to reduce your hope by one so that corresponds to these tokens here reducing the hope for example flipping one of the tokens to the inactive side uh, instead uh, instead of flipping the top card because sometimes the, this is actually very good well <laughs> no death effect is a good effect but it's not that bad usually there is uh, more than one negative effect happening so instead of flipping the top card of the deck players may choose well you know any player any player in the game may simply say look i have a card with a very very mild effect i sacrifice that card the card is discarded and you apply the effect from that card you have to choose whether you discard a card from your hand or flip the card from the top of the deck before you flip that card so you choose one or the other and then carry out the effect there's one more thing you have to do you have to also advance the corpse marker to the next space and that's the death now uh, if you have um, let's say we have a uh, um a sickness marker well first of all you may not have more sick people than 
number of people of that type. So if I have 12 engineers, I may not have 13 or 14 sick engineers. If you still have, <clears throat> if you still gain more sick people, for each sick person you have to flip the token to the other side. If you have to flip it again, well, again, another person dies and you resolve the death effect as, as I just described. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you is that um, if the sickness marker is in this area and also in this one and this one, there is additional symbol, this one meeple. So there's one meeple and one flipping token. So you flip the token, but you also add so-called a spent token. Since this is a, uh, an engineer, take one spent engineer token and add it to your, your supply. And that means your worker or your group of workers are sick and they don't work this round. Uh, you have 13 workers, 11 of them are sick. So obviously uh, some of those workers will simply, some of those engineers will not work. So that's, uh, that's what this symbol indicates. If, we would, uh, if uh, the token was here, let's say something like this, we have 22 workers, 16 of them are sick. You have to do two flips. So first one making someone very, very ill. And with the next flip, that person dies. So re you reduce, uh, you resolve the death effect normally. And here you have two spent tokens, spent worker tokens. So those are, for example, these ones. And that means in this situation, two worker meeples would, would be sick and would not work this day. They wouldn't work the, this round. And here you resolve the same thing with three spent tokens and three, three meeples, uh, three, three flips. These spent tokens only apply for the current round. At the end of the round, during the night phase, when all the meeples come back and you see whether you have enough shelters for everyone, then you remove all these, uh, all these spent worker tokens if they are occupied. So if, if you have a worker there, you remove that token. It may happen that uh, you gain such token, sorry, that you gain such token during the action phase, simply you gain it during the day. In that case, if the token is empty, you don't remove it at the end of the night or during the night. One last note, at the end of this preparation phase, before the actual action phase, always check the number of meeples that you, you are allowed to have based on the number of actual citizens. So for example, if uh, more workers would die and if the number of workers would drop down to 19, I can only have four meeples. So I'll, I have to return one, two, three, four. I have to return one of those meeples back to the general supply. That applies to all citizen types. Once this is done, move on to the next action phase. And I'm not going to show the next action phase fully. The only thing that I want to show you is how to actually cure and treat these sick people. You have to have a building like a medical post here, for example, or infirmary. Um, potentially some other, uh, here we have the cure house. So when you are allowed to cure people, for every cure, let's say you have an effect which shows, which says cure two. With that, you may cure two sick people. So reduce the number of people, sick people by two. You can uh, cure the same type of people or, or just one, let's say two, I can go one and one. Um, so that's the cure effect. If you also have a treat or if you have the treat effect, let's say treat two, for each treat effect, you can flip the token from the skull side back to the syringe side and without, without the death effect, which means you, uh, a person which is seriously ill has been treated, treated really well. So now that very, very seriously 
ill person is just only ill, uh, only ill or sick. So their condition uh, has improved. If you have a treat two effect, which means you can flip two tokens from the skull side back to the syringe side and you only have one, well, the other one is forfeited. And with that, I'm not going to explain uh, other buildings. You can find uh, their effects in the rule book. These are the ba basic ones. There are more buildings in the game. So again, check their effects in the rule book. The very last thing which I'm going to show you is this, uh, is this um, dawn phase. When you move the round marker to the space with this event marker, check and resolve the effect of that particular event from either the scenario card or, or any other card, usually just a scenario card, and then uh, remove that uh, event token from, uh, from the board. Uh, when, as I already showed you, when the development marker or when the round marker reaches the development space, then uh, um, that technology will be, will be researched. And when you reach the space or when, when the store marker meets the round marker or they pass each other, don't resolve anything now during the dawn phase. Go to the morning phase, resolve the effect. Go to the generator phase, resolve that. And then during the weather phase, when you flip the card, that snow marker may actually move even further. During the weather phase, you remove, you resolve the snow effect, uh, this storm effect. The storm in this scenario will simply remove all the tents and make them ruins. So these tents, if uh, here we are, these tents would be flipped over to the other side and they would become ruins. Ruins don't act as a shelter. You may not place. Uh, you may not. Uh, I mean. Those ruins are, will not provide shelter for your citizens during the night phase. Then continue resolving the card. Uh, the token will be placed back on the space number 12 and uh, there will be another storm coming later, later in the round. And the very last thing which I'm going to explain is this, uh, is this hunger. During the hunger phase, which is phase number 8, first thing you have to do is to reduce the hunger. If you have enough food, as I showed you previously, uh, you feed all these hungry people first. So we have 11 food, 7 hungry people, those will be fed. We have 4 food remaining and we spend those 4, food, four food to feed other people. If, let's say it's like, uh, like this, we have 8 people hungry and only 2 food. We spend that food and we have six people hungry, six remaining people hungry. Based on the position of this hunger, mar hungry, hunger marker, based on where it is, you resolve the corresponding effect. Here, this plus one fist meaning, it means that you uh, increase the discontent by one. So either by adding another token or flipping the inactive side to the active side up. And here's one two, three or four deaths, which, mean one, uh, which means one person dies. Which one it is, uh, it, it's the person who, was, uh, who became hungry in a previous round. So if we are in the round four right now, we have to feed uh, children. But in the previous round, that was round number three, we had to feed the uh, workers. So these hungry people here, those were workers. And if we don't feed them now, it's the worker who dies. This is one, so one worker dies. You don't reduce sickness marker now because it wasn't a worker who was sick, it was a worker who was hungry. So you simply reduce the number of workers. Don't forget to increase the number of corpses here. And then the hunger token resets back to zero. So that's how you play Frostpunk the board game. Since this is a very unusual format for my channel, please let me know whether the video was helpful or not. If you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the channel, please subscribe. You can support the channel on the Patreon page or under the video, uh, clicking the thank you button. 
you've been watching a instructional gameplay video for Frostpunk the board game from Glass Cannon. My name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash